Right. So, good afternoon, all of you. We are going to have discussion of INICT number 22, which was held on last Sunday. Surgery questions. I'll discuss uh, the questions as well as the concept also behind the question. Like this is the first question for a cancer proximal transverse colon, which vessel should be ligated. This is a totally technical surgical question. You see, this is ileum, and this is cecum appendix ascending and transverse and descending colon. First of all, let's understand what surgery we do. Any cancer in this area, right from ileocecal junction till hepatic flexure, the surgery we do is right hemicolectomy. I'm not saying how much we remove. I'm just telling you location. So cancer located in this area is treated by right hemicolectomy. Cancer in transverse colon, like in this question, is treated by right extended hemicolectomy. And cancer in descending colon from splenic flexure till sigmoid is treated by left hemicolectomy. So this is the area where we do the surgery. But what surgery we do? I mean, how much we know right hemicolectomy? Another point we need to know, the safe margin for colon cancer is 5 cm, 5 or 6 cm. For esophagus is 10, for stomach 5 and for rectum 2 cm. That's the safe margin. For colon also 5 to 6 cm. And the number of node needs to be removed in the specimen should be 12, minimum 12 or more. Let's understand the surgery. Now to understand surgery, we have to know the blood supply. So this is the superior mesenteric artery giving middle colic, right colic and ileo. This is the middle colic branch. This is the right colic branch. This is the ileo. Ileo colic gives a bendicial artery. And then we have inferior mesenteric giving left colic, sigmoidal and superior rectum. Most HMA part of the colon is splenic flexure called Griffith point. It's a watershed area between superior and inferior mesenteric artery. So in right hemicolectomy, like cancer here, here, we take about 2-3 inches, 5-7 centimeter of terminal ileum, then go like this, and this is the middle colic right and left branch, cut through the right branch of middle colic, this is the right hemicolic. we have to cut through right branch, and this we do when the cancer is in the ascending colon area. For right, for left hemicolectomy, we go through the left branch of middle colic up to mid sigmoid and remove like this. That's left hemicolectomy. For right extended, we do right hemicolectomy, but now we have to go through the left branch of middle colic, but there's a problem. In the left branch of middle colic, splenic flexure will be left, which is the ischemic area, and that's not a wise surgery because ischemia is the biggest enemy of any bowel surgery, the leak, stricture, all more with more ischemia. So we include splenic flexure also. And for that, we have to cut the main trunk of middle colic. If I'm doing right hemicolectomy, then I'll only go through the right branch of middle colic, okay? If you do internet search or read some casual book, not surgery book, for transverse colon, you may find a word transverse colectomy, which we no, don't do. That's a, I mean, kind of a, okay, it's a surgery, but it's not preferred. Only three surgery, right, right extended and left hemicolectomy. So this is a love and belly image showing the right hemicolectomy where I'm going to the right branch of middle colic for the cancer and cecum, right sided colon. For left hemicolectomy, we go to the left branch of middle colic. And for right extended, we cut the middle colic main trunk and remove the splenic flexure as well. Although, as I said, this one and this one both are right extended. And for both, I'll be cutting the main trunk, middle colic. But this is preferred over this because here we remove the splenic flexure, which is a ischemic area. Okay, it's a different point. Now, question number two, image of gas and the diaphragm based treatment. First of all, for gas and the diaphragm, you only look at the left, right side, not on the left side. Left side, we do have fundal gas shadow, we do have splenic flexure air. So that, of course, create confusion. Left side, and also you can get gas and the diaphragm, but when you have plenty of gas, small amount of gas doesn't go on left side, only on right side. Now, here there are three points, three questions. Number one, what is the best treatment? And you have an option of resuscitation followed by laparotomy 
that is the best answer registration followed by laparotomy if that's not answer best treatment the answer would be laparotomy but there's a trick that says old aims question what is the initial treatment if someone says initial treatment the answer will be iv fluid so whether the question was initial treatment the answer is iv fluid best treatment laparotomy but if you have a treatment like resuscitation followed by laparotomy that is the best answer okay the x ray signs of newer peritoneum other than gas bill or diaphragm like this one you need to know some more mcq what's the gold standard gold standard for newer peritoneum ct scan and which x ray you order x ray chest erect view huh? not x ray abdomen any x ray that you get in exam to see air bill or diaphragm will be x ray chest not x ray abdomen in abdomen the best will be left lateral decubital these are the mcq so air and the diaphragm best seen in chest x-ray gold standard ct and among all x-ray best is left lateral decubitus view uh, other signs of neoportinema doge cap sign the this is the liver this is the kidney there's in between morrison pouch so air gets collected in morris morrison pouch giving an appearance of a doge cap doge cap is something like this so doge cap sign air in morrison pouch regular sign this is the bowel air inside the bowel air outside outside the bowel and we can see the bowel wall in between that's called regular sign where we can see the wall of the bowel this sign is very important this sign is less important these two sign you may get as an image to identify in exam rest only remember the name falciform ligament you can see a line here falciform ligament football sign the new abdominum air in abdomen gives football appearance plus falciform ligament may give a suture like appearance so that's called football sign Cupola sign, inverted V sign. These are the signs of pneumopertin. In which these two, this is very, very important. This is less important, but these two may be asked. Regular triad, we get in gallstone ileus. Regular sign, we get in pneumopertonia. So this is a air below diaphragm. I don't see here. It could be air below diaphragm, but it can be uh, fundal gas shadow or falsif or, or uh, this uh, splenic fracture. So both can create confusion. Regular sign is just wall, bowel wall you can see here, all these, the yellow arrows are showing bowel wall. And why bowel wall is visible? Because air inside the lumen, outside in between wall we can see. This is another regular sign where we can see the bowel wall. All these are white lines are bowel wall. Uh, that's a sign of pneumopertonium. Other signs are not important. A stomach tumor with spindle cell, CK positive, CD11 cell positive and uh, sorry, not CD100. CD or S100 probably, I'm not sure what was the question. S100 and cytokatal negative, most probable diagnosis. Obviously, CK positive, spindle cell is GIST. What are the salient feature about GIST you need to know? GIST called gastrointestinal stromal tumor is the same tumor which we used to consider about 30 years back as Leo Myosarcoma. It's coming from the muscle. So it was called Leo Myosarcoma. Not anymore. Now we know that this is not coming from a smooth muscle of the stomach. It is coming from cell of Kajal. C-A-G-A-L. Interstitial cell of Kajal. So what is cell of origin of this? Cell of Kajal. This, it is in the muscle layer, but not from the muscle cell. It's a interstitial cell, mesian camel cell, cell of Kajal. It is the third most common tumor of the stomach. Just most common adenocarcinoma, 90%. Lymphoma, 5%. Just 3%. And most common site, stomach, followed by ileum. So stomach is most common, then it's stomach more than 50%, ileum 25%. So say about 80% are stomach and ileum only. E just extra intestinal just most common site, momentum. What is the most common presentation? Most common presentation is bleeding. A bleeding. And node secondaries are very rare. Unlike adenocarcinoma, which goes to local node, it just doesn't go to node. Either direct invasion or blood-borne secondaries. In blood-borne, most common site of secondary liver. And direct invasion, most common site, omentum. Liver, omentum. Uh, pathologically, we have a triad or just called carnate triad. In carnate triad, there is spindle cell most common. Sorry, epithelioid most common, but here most common is spindle cell. A spindle cell is around 70, 70%, epithelioid 25%, and mixed 5%. But in carnate triad, just most common is epithelioid. 
What is investigation of choice? CT scan. What is investigation for recurrent gist? PET scan. These all are one in a PET scan. And um, what is best way to take biopsy? Endoscopic ultrasound guided biopsy. So EUS guided biopsy is best rather than CT guided biopsy. CT guided biopsy can cause dissemination and bleeding, both problems. Dissemination and bleeding. So EUS, CT is not contraindicated, CT guided biopsy is done rarely, but EUS guided biopsy is preferred. And GIST is found in layer 4 and layer 2 in the stomach wall in endoscopic ultrasound guided biopsy. The tumor marker are CD117 and DODGE1, D-O-G, DODGE1. Rarely BCL2 uh, and CD34 is also positive. Malignant criteria, Fletcher criteria. Fletcher criteria tells us the cancer or potential of GIST and it's based on only two things, size and mitotic index. Size more than 5 centimeter, mitotic index more than 5 per 50 high power field is cancer. And these are the prognostic indicator also. Most important mitotic index, second size and third is site where that these are the prognostic indicators. Indicator. So, 1, 2 and 3rd is site which is also important. The treatment is surgery where you take 2 cm margin, another one liner question and all CD117 or all C kit positive or PDGF positive just can be treated by tyrosine kinase inhibitor, drug of choice, imatinib. 400 milligram per day in a imatinib, imatinib is silent, I-M-A-T-I-N-I-B, imatinib 400 milligram per day, 400 milligram. In imatinib resistant just which is a question of PGI, sonatinib. Sonatinib is a drug for imatinib resistant just. Other two drugs which are recently approved, third generation is regorafenib, regorafenib and fourth generation is evapretinib, eva Pretinib, A V A P R E T I N I B, Evapretinib. Evapretinib is also preferred for PDGF alpha positive patient. And uh, there is a cardinal triad for GIST, which includes GIST, paraganglioma, and pulmonary chondroma. Chondroma, not chordoma. Okay, pulmonary chondroma. Match the following rat tail sign. As we know, rat tail sign we get in CA esophagus or rarely in achalasia. In achalasia, we get bird beak sign, but rat tail also. The difference would be in achalasia, it is smooth, while in CA esophagus, it will be irregular, serrated with the filling defects inside. So naturally, here it is achalasia. String sign, string sign, we get in tuberculosis, we get in um, CHPS, we get in string sign of canton crons. So string sign, we got tuberculosis already, there is a inverted double sign. So out of these first string sign will be CHPS. Football sign, already I told you, pneumopoietonium. And inverted umbrella sign called Frieschner sign is a sign of ileocecal tuberculosis. So this is a rat tail sign. This is a string sign. Normal pylorus is like this. While in CHPS, pylorus get hypertrophied and thickened. So the pyloric canal gets stretched, giving a string sign. And the dinal bulb here makes it a mushroom sign. So these are two signs of CHPS. And the length of pylorus in ultrasound more than 16 millimeter and the thickness more than 4 millimeter. The whole width 14, but thickness 4 is suggestive of CHPS. The signs of, and this is the football sign, this is a Fleischner sign. Football sign, I did not show it, never be asked, don't worry. Image will not be asked. Fleischner sign is due to the narrowing of terminal ileum and thickened ileocecal valve giving a inverted umbrella sign, something like this, huh? inverted umbrella sign and uh, Frieschner sign. Other signs of genital tuberculosis are, earliest is called chicken intestine, which is hypersegmentation. Intestine gets kind of this kind of picture. So flocculation, flocculation of barium, uh, inverted umbrella, rapid flow of barium in the inflamed segment, sterling sign, Gooseneck, pulled up cecum string sign and, and mega. As I said, you do get string sign here also, but in that question, string sign was for CHPS. Commoner said tuberculosis, ileocecal junction, very simple question, very basic question. Match the following. Polypropylene 
which is a monofilament which is dyed in blue color non absorbable is mainly used for the closure of first of all hernia repair we prefer proline and number 2 hernia repair prefer proline and number 2 vessel vessel also proline even for fascia proline can be used but now we have PD, uh, pds so we prefer that nylon again non absorbable here out of these four skin is the best answer polyglectin which is a vicryl vicryl is the workhorse of all surgeon vicryl is most important for us vicryl is mainly for bowel if vicryl is not available you can even use chromic agar but you should use absorbable suture and polydiaxone which comes with in a pds for abdominal closure vicryl one more question frequently asked absorbable suture like these two are absorbable and these are non absorbable absorbable can be synthetic or natural so this one these two are synthetic and they get absorbed by hydrolysis while natural which is chromic absorbable chromic agar it gets absorbed by enzymatic degradation so this is a frequently asked question they they'll give me four suture and ask which is absorbed by hydrolysis so the natural catgut sutures are absorbed by enzymatic degradation and uh, synthetic by hydrolysis so these are the matching now this is of course it's very important i think all faculties you attend any surgery lecture he'll emphasize the importance of this this is a coffee bean shaped shadow of sigmoid volvulus sigmoid volvulus sign could be i mean there are different type of uh, this is the abdomen so sigmoid volvulus can have a turn on this side that is anti clockwise or can have a turn on this side that is clockwise although anti clockwise are much much more common than clockwise but sigmoid volvulus will always have rotation on this side little smaller but little more circular comma or kidney shape shadow so sigmoid this is a coffee bean shape shadow like this side or this side or vertical all you may get this is another this one is sigmoid this is very important so you must identify these also inverted u shape shape shadow omega sign or sigmoid volvus this is a bird beak sign of barium enema so barium enema volvus does give bird beak sign this one this one and this one while in, this is at the rectum while in cecal volvulus the bird beak sign will be somewhere here and uh, this is cecal volvulus you see here the direction will be on the left side this is a comma or kidney shaped shadow these are cecal volvulus uh, there is one more sign which is not important this is not at all important northern exposure sign of volvulus normally when you take x ray the transverse colon going like this sigmoid like this so the transverse colon topmost line will be above sigmoid if the sigmoid goes this is the sigmoid topmost point this is the transverse so if the sigmoid goes above transverse colon this of course is a typical sigmoid so this called northern exposure sign where the sigmoid goes above the transverse colon we do have one more ct sign called um, speed steel pan sign not mentioned in book is yet so i don't think it's that important but ct scan can give ct steel pan is just a drum and this is a image of volvulus intraoperative which is live and healthy and this is a gangrene so whenever you have gangrene in sigmoid volvulus don't say i'll do resection and anastomosis which normally we do in other places here we do hartman's procedure h a r t m a n n so when question says what will do in sigmoid volvulus gangrene always say hartman's procedure okay hartman's is a colostomy proximal colostomy distal closure which is reversible match the following number of node removed these are the correct number i mean the question was like in stomach question was 10 which is wrong so these are the number you should remove breast 10 in stomach i have written more than 15 means if i have to write one figure i'll say 16 or more i mean 15 or more or 16 so minimum should be 16 gallbladder 6 colon 12 so these are the number of you know, node you have to remove in cancer a patient was referred for acute necrotizing pancreatitis with abdominal collection in ct scan patient is on you see in pancreatitis collection is very common and collection is generally managed conservatively unless it gets infected if it is infected then we go for percutaneous aspiration or if if it is not absorbed then after 4 week this becomes pseudocyst the same collection having a fibrous wall which is a reactionary fibrous wall after 4 weeks becomes pseudocyst 
so that becomes an indication for surgery pseudocyst is operated after six weeks develops after four weeks so collection as such is no indication likewise necrotizing pancreatitis is no indication for surgery unless it is necrotic infected pancreatitis then you do necrosectomy and uh, later on like fluid becomes pseudocyst this becomes w o n walled off necrosis that also needs surgery patient on vasopressor laparotomy cannot be done obviously there's an infection best answer would be perkinogen in this question what are the indications of surgery in pancreatitis first of all gallstone pancreatitis where the gallstone is causing obstruction of ampulla or beta getting stuck there causing fibrosis so ercp is the best option and that should be done within 48 hours 48 hours is the golden period of ercp for serious or for pancreatitis this i told you infected fluid collection if i say pancreatic perimenal fluid then answer is conservative infected word makes it indication for surgery aspiration again infected word pancreatic necrosis is treated by amipenem carbamazepine antibiotic but infected means surgery and walled off necrosis and nothing it's a chronic necrosis with abscess and pseudocyst which is a infected fluid collection having fibrous wall these are the indication of surgery post appendicular bleed which artery needs to be ligated you see appendicectomy not appendicular post appendicectomy appendicectomy bleed now this is appendix this is meso appendix this is the ileo colic artery here which is the terminal branch of superior mesenteric tract and this is the appendicular artery so naturally if this is a bleed we have to ligate this artery but there's one more question the ileo colic artery will give anterior cecal branch or posterior cecal branch from the posterior cecal branch we have a additional artery going to appendix sometime called accessory appendicular artery or artery of shesha chalam so that was one question s h e s h a c h a l a f so that was one question accessory appendicular artery is a branch of which artery in vivas they do us artery of shesha chalam also it's important during appendicectomy it's not a normal artery it's a aberrant artery but an important artery so this is the appendicular artery a branch of ileocolic so uh, ileocecal here you cut and uh, uh, this is the accessory appendicular artery which is posterior cecal artery branch that's again is a uh, important question asked earlier b12 deficiency is seen in the resection of all i mean all the question we have discussed so far is are the regular question all of this has been covered in the classroom teaching even b12 also though it's not surgery but when i discuss gastrectomy i tell the importance of b12 uh, deficiency after gastrectomy b12 is absorbed from ileum two things are absorbed from ileum one is b12 second is bile salt uh, they are not absorbed any other part of the gat only if you do ileal resection b12 deficiency is a rule and because of bile salt deficiency gallstones are quite cholesterol gallstones are quite common so they are absorbed in ileum so of course ileum is important what is the contribution of stomach is stomach produces intrinsic factor from the parietal cell b12 gets combined with intrinsic factor only that absorbed so stomach is important what about dendrum dendrum is not very important but sometimes b12 can be protein bound so that proteolysis is done in the stomach and dendrum so it helps in the proteolysis only and jejunum no role so obviously the answer here is jejunum the answer is jejunum because it's uh, it, it does not contribute in b12 remember b12 and bile salt are absorbed from ileum so ileal resection will always cause these problems jejunal resection mostly do not cause any problem because jejunum job can be done by ileum but ileum function cannot be done by jejunum uh, fat soluble vitamin a d e k are also predominantly absorbed from ileum though jejunum also can absorb distal jejunum can absorb that local anesthesia given just distal tympanic ligament which nerve is blocked obviously the answer is femoral nerve uh, that what we do in angiography angioplasty through the to the cell danger technique through femoral artery so ileo hypogastric nerve supplies this area coming here and ileo hypogastric gets injured in open appendicectomy open appendix surgery ileo inguinal supplies this area root of penis and little bit of upper part of medial aspect of thigh so that was a question in last year you know i i c t or probably neat that uh, after lap surgery laparoscopic hernia surgery patient having 
uh, or sorry, open hernia surgery patient having root or penis anesthesia, paresthesia, which nerve is injured? The answer is ilio inguinal. Genitofemoral coming here, giving a femoral branch and a genital branch, which will follow the cord and supply testis. So this is here. And finally, lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh, which is the most common nerve injured in lap hernia surgery, uh, will cause paresthesia or anesthesia or, or pain in the later aspect. As far as local, this area is concerned, here, femoral vein, artery and nerve. So basically, uh, femoral nerve is the main nerve. Artery medial most, then vein, vein, vein medial most, then artery, then nerve. So you see, lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh is injured in, most commonly uh, injured nerve in lap hernia surgery. Ileo hypogastric will uh, this is basically injured in open appendix surgery and this area is in, uh, involved. Ileo inguinal will supply this area, the pink area. Obturator will supply this area, a little more lower down. And uh, this is the anterior cutaneous. And deep down will be the femoral nerve. So answer this question. Out of these four femoral is the best answer. Which vaccine is not given after spinach me? In spleen, the capsulated bacteria are destroyed and uh, splenectomy, though it's very rare, but theoretically, we have a condition called OPSI, overwhelming post splenectomy infection. And that is more after elective splenectomy rather than emergency trauma. Uh, so after splenectomy, we give vaccine. And in generally, the protocol followed is in elective, the vaccine should be given within 14 days prior to surgery, before surgery, and in emergency where you do, where you don't have time for vaccination, you give within 48 hours the Hib H infancy and within uh, two weeks meningococcal and pneumococcal. So these three vaccine you give, not the typhoid vaccine. This is a one line of simple question. Laparoscopy has all the benefit except. Beta cosmosis, undoubtedly, your incision size smaller, half and one centimeter. So definitely less pain, of course, less pain because uh, less trauma to the tissue. Early ambulation, definitely delayed time of discharge, no. This is how it's compensating the cost. Laparoscopy is very expensive. As compared to open surgery, it was very expensive in the past. But in open surgery, I'll keep the patient five days and laparoscopy next day we discharge. So three, four days, hospital admission cost is saved. So now laparoscopy is almost at par with open surgery as far as cost is concerned. So this is a wrong statement. Renal tumor with hematuria and renal mass in CT with hypodense shadow negative Hounsfield. You see, this is negative Hounsfield means fat and this is angiomyolipoma. What are the features we need to know about angiomyolipoma? As the name suggests, angiom, it's also called renal hamartoma. So angiomyolipoma is one of the rare tumor which are common in female. All other tumors are common in male and common after 40 years rather than old age. Having three tissues, angio, blood vessel, myo, smooth muscle, lipoma, fat. And one feature about vessel you need to know, they are although thick walled, but they don't have sympathetic submission, so they, they cannot vasoconstrict and bleeding can be quite profuse here. Uh, in about 20-25%, angioma lipoma can be multiple and can be familial. One condition is tuberous sclerosis. It may be found with tuberous sclerosis. And second is pecoma, perivascular epithelite cell oma, perivascular epithelite cell oma. So pecoma also has an association, AML, angioma lipoma has association with pecoma. Presentation is Lenk's triad, L-E-N-K, Lenk's triad, which is number one, pain, all due to bleeding. But remember, hematuria is not very common because bleeding is not in the correct system. Bleeding is in the retrobotanium or in the tumor, in the kidney. So pain, number two, hypotension, number three, lump. All due to bleeding. Hematuria, you only get in very few number. And as far as bleeding is, uh, is spontaneous bleeding, it is due to spontaneous bleeding of angiomyolipoma. Spontaneous bleeding is concerned in angiomyolipoma, that's called Wunderlich syndrome, W-U-N-D-E-R-L-I-C-H. W-U-N-D-E-R, 
एल आई सी एच वंडर लिप सिंड्रोम सो वंडर लिप सिंड्रोम इज द स्पॉन्टेनियस विदाउट ट्रोमा ब्लीडिंग है एंजमा लाइफोमा दैट कैन कॉज ए ट्राइड कॉल लैंग स्ट्राइड एल ई एन के पेन लंप एन हाइपोटेंशन इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस इज सी टी स्कैन एंड एज वी नो सी टी स्कैन मेजर्स द डेंसिटी ऑफ टिश्यू द डॉक्टर हाउंसफील्ड इन्वेंटेड सी टी स्कैन गॉड फ्री हाउंसफील्ड ही गॉट टोबल प्राइज ऑल्सो फॉर इज इन्वेंशन सो इन सी टी स्कैन द यूनिट ऑफ डेंसिटी इज एच यू हाउंसफील्ड यूनिट एंड जीरो इज वॉटर सो एनी टिश्यू हैविंग डेंसिटी लेस देन वॉटर हैज ए नेगेटिव हाउंसफील्ड शैडो and as you know the fat if i keep fat on the water it will float it will not sink so the fat hounsfield is negative minus 70 to minus 100 although in this tumor any density less than minus 30 is considered critical and it's fat in syndrome lipoma so invasive choice of ct scan and tumor marker is hmb45 hmb45 which is a marker for melanoma milani and etc but here also it's used the treatment is less than 4 cm and asymptomatic cons everolimus can be given but conservative less than 4 cm asymptomatic conservative and uh, more than 4 cm or symptomatic you treat prefer treatment angiomelization or nephrectomy but nephrectomy should be partial nephrectomy so <coughs> negative hospital shadow hypotens lesion in the kidney <laughs> it's a distal angiomyeloma one more tumor of the kidney oncocytoma has a central scar and not angiomyeloma separate question separate tumor but that's also classical <coughs> frequently asked so spoke wheel pattern of central scar in kidney which tumor you have oncocytoma and which tumor has negative hounsfield shadow and fat in tumor that's angiomyeloma which is done first done in hypospadias so this is uh, hypospadias sorry so urology you see hypospadias means the meatus is not at the tip rather on the ventral aspect could be here called glandular here called coronal these are penile distal mid proximal penoscrotal scrotal peninea very proximal hypospadias will appear like labia majora and bifid you know scrotum so giving like appearance of female genitalia so this may need chromosomal chemical typing to determine the sex but fortunately 80% are distal coronal and uh, glandular the features of hypospadias are number one the opening is ventral the most this of course is diagnostic most consistent finding the prepuce only covers the dorsal aspect not the ventral which is called hooded prepuce that's it very important mcq most consistent finding in, in hypospadias hooded prepuce then the penis may have curvature on the this is the opening this is the fibrous tissue may have opening on the ventral aspect and that's called cordy cordy is very common but not a consistent finding more proximal the opening is more the cordy and cordy correction is the first step we do first sometime we do two state operation first cordy correction makes the straightening of the penis second stage you do or if the cord is not severe you can do one stage operation metastasis can be there this is a finding metastasis can also be there and this is the most common penile uh, congenital anomaly one in 300 very very important so so you see most common anomaly of penis one in 300 and these two types of the main type 80% and this is basically these are and this is the cord so if cordy is there now in this question i am not very sure some said degloving was the option some said orthoplasty cordy correction if orthoplasty cordy correction is there that of course is the first step this is what you do this always is the first step and if this is not an option then during surgery first thing we do is actually degloving something like this peel off the skin to repair degloving so that is the operative step in correction cordy you do before that so the surgery that we do in glandular type we do macpy meter advancement glandoplasty coronal subcoronal these two type matthew is very often even even uh, um, even tip can be done in penile these two type asopa preposure flap ducket in very practical tip you can keep here also here also proximal barca tip buccal mucosa turner mark we turner mark is a two stage procedure so ducket and turner warwick are very important very old surgery almost i would say 
फाइव सिक्स डिकेड ओल्ड सर जी सॉरी आई सम हाउ एक्सीडेंटली क्लोज इट लेट मी ओपन इट अगेन या सो बट स्टिल डन सो नाउ पीपल प्रिफर टी आई पी फॉर प्रोक्सिमल पीपल प्रिफर बक्कल म्यूकोजा और राधर दिन फ्लैप आई शुड से ग्राफ्ट मैथ्यू इज ऑल्सो वेरी कॉमनली डन फॉर डिजिटल फॉर प्रोक्सिमल सॉरी कोरोनल और सब कोरोनल विच ड्रग इज यूज टू रिड्यूस ब्लीडिंग दिस ड्रग इज बेसिकली पोटाशियम आयोडाइड फॉर लिगोल साइडिंग विच इज गिवेन ओरली and this is given pre operatively for 2 weeks you can give to reduce the bleeding from thyroid make it more fibrous it makes it more fibrous so it and second role of potassium iodide is a uh, thyrotoxic storm it prevents the conversion of t4 to t3 so it's also given in thyrotoxic storm in thyrotoxic storm if you cannot give oral potassium iodide then you can give uh, sodium iodide which can be given intravenously but potassium iodide is given orally not intravenously So it's just a solution of iodine five percent and potassium iodide ten percent combination. Propanolol will take care of you know tachycardia and cardiac. PTO is again prior to surgery you have to make the patient euthyroid. So these are basically anti-thyroid drug. Lidol, lidol iodine rather it is anti-thyroid but at the same time also makes the thyroid more fibrous, less vascular. So it reduces the bleeding. Not intraoperatively you have to give pre-operatively two three weeks. 90 year old girl with an egg swelling which moves with deglutition first of all it moves with deglutition so it is either thyroglossal cyst or thyroid but thyroglossal cyst also moves with protrusion of tongue which is not mentioned here and invading sound section means cancer so of course adenoma and this is out now some students said that orphan any eye nucleus was given so the answer would be papillary cancer thyroid if it was not given then the most the cancer which is the highest risk of invasion of surrounding structure is anaplastic followed by medullary cancer thyroid followed by papillary cancer thyroid not ptc pct papillary cancer thyroid so anaplastic medullary and papillary this is the uh, decreasing order invasion probability anaplastic is not a option here medullary and ptc pct are option for uh, papillary thyroid cancer papillary thyroid cancer so among these two this is the answer if orphan any eye nucleus is not given if it is given then of course papillary thyroid cancer is the answer match the following i have given the answer in front of it already matched thyroid ultrasound guided biopsy for a nodule which is barely palpable usg guides you from where you should take biopsy so your false negative become less and your accuracy becomes more breast choker biopsy in breast i can very well do fnac which is very very good but for if i have to give chemotherapy prior to surgery or i have to do uh, erpr then we need to cut true cut gives you tissue fnac gives you a uh, cell so true cut is definitely better uh, and more accurate so of course this mark what is incision and excision so there is a tumor here or there is a mass i just take a chunk of from the edge with normal tissue this is incisional biopsy what is this biopsy not ulcer this is misprinting incisional biopsy okay so incisional means i am just removing a part of the tumor or lesion with normal skin and what is excisional you remove complete complete tumor like sebaceous like lymphoma lipoma like lymph node complete so in excisional you remove complete incisional only small patient comes with oral cavity cancer you don't have to remove complete but you need a tissue biopsy you will go for incisional biopsy then uh, uh, shave biopsy you do for basal cell cancer and punch biopsy you can do from the nipple area uh, breast nipple from ear lobule from cervix and certain areas so it's already matched this is not also this is biopsy so lymph node i'll remove completely sexual margin also only one small part i'll take from the lesion with normal skin cells so incision sirs does not include sirs systemic inflammatory response syndrome has four criteria temperature systolic blood pressure respiratory rate pulse rate it does not have systolic blood pressure dekho sirs heart rate more than 90 temperature more than 38 degree or less than 36 degree respiratory rate 
मोर देन ट्वेंटी पर मिनट और पी ए सी ओ टू लेस देन थर्टी टू मिलीमीटर मकरी पी ए सीओ टू लेस देन थर्टी टू बिकॉज हाइपर वेंटिलेशन यू वॉश आउट द सीओ टू एंड फाइनली टी एल सी काउंट लेस देन फोर थाउजेंड और मोर देन ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड ऑब्वियसली वाई लेस मोर तो समझ में आ रहा है इट्स इन्फेक्शन वाई लेस एनर्जी आई मीन लॉस ऑफ रिस्पॉन्स सो दीज आर फोर नाउ वॉट हैपन्स If there is infection, then you call it sepsis. Out of these four, two should be positive to call it as virus. And the so next step is sepsis. What is severe sepsis? Severe sepsis means either there is acidosis or organ failure. That's the next step. By acidosis, I mean lactate less than four. And what is septicemic shock? Next step: systolic blood pressure less than. 90 millimeter mercury so systolic blood pressure less than 90 is systemic is a uh, shock it's not sirs that's the next step and i said sirs next step sepsis but sepsis can also cause sirs so in pancreatitis like condition which is non uh, infective patient may have sirs followed by infection or septicemic shock he can first have sepsis then sirs So SIRS can be with infection or without infection, like pancreatitis. More often with infection. So the four criteria, as you know, temperature, of course, uh, systolic blood pressure. No, this is a part of. Like I'll show you here. These are the four criteria: temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate. Here you can add PaCO2 uh, less than 32 millimeter mercury and WBC count more than 12,000 of them. Another criteria that frequently asked in INI CT is. Q so far, Q so far has only three parameters: respiratory rate, altered mental status, and systolic blood pressure. Altered mental status is GCS less than fifteen; it should be fourteen or less. So that's another quick so far. So systemic organ organ failure assessment Q so far not included in damage control surgery. Damage control surgery concept. Let's understand. like patient comes with poly trauma he has multiple traumas and you do laparotomy you find liver laceration spleen shattered bowel injuries you do repair of uh, liver splenectomy bowel repair you do five hours for surgery very meticulous surgery very good surgery shift the patient to icu and he is dead within 24 hours the reason is not surgical incompetence reason reason is medical problem the lethal child of death is hypothermia coagulopathy and acidosis so we have to correct this consider this very important and you have to correct this before you do definitive surgery patient is bleeding if i don't operate he'll die and if i operate he'll die of medical problem so now we do staged operation resuscitate followed by damage control surgery which is abbreviated surgery don't go for complete you know reconstruction of bowel and vessel etc no damage control what's the aim of damage control just save the life by what control hemorrhage control for the infection that's decontamination and control for the injury physiologically it makes the patient stable so bleeding infection control for the injury this is the aim these are the three aim for the injury infection and bleeding then chip the and don't close the abdomen leave the abdomen open that's called laparotomy laparotomy you can apply bagota bag which is a mcq image of bagota bag just a transparent sheet you find at the abdomen not properly closed temporary closure that's a laparotomy laparotomy not laparotomy leave it open put the uh, uh, some temporary kind of closure and shift the patient to icu where these three things will be corrected now then he shifted back to ot in 48 hours and then you do the definitive surgery so vascular anastomosis definitive is not a part of damage control so see first you do resuscitation followed by damage control followed by intensive then definitive and damage control basically is so this is the triad lethal triad coagulopathy acidosis and hypothermia that's why multiple blood transfusion becomes very harmful for the patient uh, these are the indications of damage control and this you have to remember it's given in lavendari so base deficit more than 8 ph uh, severe acidosis less than 7.2 hypotension uh, less than 90 hypothermia ptt more than 60 so ph less than 7.21 and ptt more than 70 is almost 
mortality rate. So in damage control, we do control hemorrhage, control contamination, and control for the injury and restore physiology to the normal. Definitive surgery you will not do now, that will do in later stage. Okay? Yeah. So an old lady fell down and presented after a few days with headache. And after a few days, remember, after trauma, if someone has extra dural hematoma, he will not have late presentation. There is nothing like chronic extra dural. So chronic extra dural is not there. Chronic subdural can be there. So after a few days, this is a classical subdural hematoma, late presentation, old patient. And which artery? Bridging vessel. So let's first understand the extra dural subdural. Extra dural between the dura and arachnoid subdural below the arachnoid and pyometer. Subdural and extra dural. So, uh, sorry, my fault. Let, let me correct. So extra dural, extra outside the dura and bone and subdural between arachnoid and dura. Yeah, so that was tip of tongue. So extra dural is common in young age and it's due to blunt, blunt injury on the temporoparietal. This is the most common site, temporoparietal area. The vessel is middle meningeal artery, which is arterial, of course. So arterial bleed. And fracture skull is very common in adult 95%, children 75%. So fracture skull, middle meningeal artery, fracture skull. And extra dural do not cross midline. Do not cross midline. And extra dural can have lucid interval. Lucid interval is a more classical feature of extra dural, where patient is unconscious, then conscious, and again unconscious. So it's a period of consciousness between two, two unconsciousness. And extra dural uh, CT finding biconvex, lenticular, biconvex. While subdural common in old age can be caused by a very severe, uh, very minor trauma, very severe, such a minor trauma that patient even don't remember he, he sustained trauma and later on he may present. So old patient, the vessel is bridging vessel between the dura like here, here. This C here, between the dura and arachnoid veins going here, bridging vein, they bleed. So it's a venous bleeding in this area, huh? venous bleeding here. And extra dural, arterial, middle meningeal artery. So it's a bridging vein and venous bleeding, old age. Bilaterality, more common in subdural. 33%, extra dural, 3%. Plus, counter coup. Trauma on this side, hematoma on this side, more common in subdural. So counter coup injury is more common in subdural. And it can be acute, it can be chronic. Patient may present chronic. The in CT acute will appear white and chronic will appear black. And in CT subdural is concave or convex, lenticular. So this is the extra dural biconvex. This is concave or convex, lenticular, subdural. And if the midline shift is more than half centimeter, it's an indication or lenticular horn circumference, it's an indication for surgery, evacuation. Now, in subdural, if it is white, it is acute. If it is black, it is chronic. And it can be lower part white and upper part black. Black, this is acute and chronic. So, so acute, subacute, and chronic. Not acute and chronic, rather I should say subacute. So, acute, subacute, and chronic. It is acute, it is subacute, this chronic. So, all are subdural. There is one more sign here, important sign, swirl sign. Inside the white shadow, you see, this is white, hyperdense. All these are uh, fresh blood. But in fresh blood, inside white, you may find a black shadow which suggests a continuing bleeding or a re-bleeding, a fresh bleed. That's called swirl sign. So inside the white shadow, you may find black shadow. That's called swirl sign. That's not a good sign. That's a re-bleeding, continuous bleeding. Another point, extra dural is an emergency. It should be operated immediately. Subdural also emergency, but extra dural is a dire emergency immediately. Subdural is emergency and chronic subdural is less emergency. Which has the best prognosis? Chronic subdural. Then extra dural, then acute subdural. So that's another question. Best prognosis? Chronic subdural hematoma. Followed by extra dural and followed by acute subdural. A X-ray of pneumothorax was given after stab injury with a pneumothorax clear cut and treatment of choice for us. Of course, it's called intercostal drainage tube. We also can be called tube thoracostomy. But if it's a tension pneumothorax, 
tension where you will have engorged neck pain, hypotension, tachycardia, very severe air hunger, severe mesial shift to other side. Those kind of condition. And if they say, what is the first step? Then you have to do needle thoracostomy. Put a needle in the thorax and um, needle fifth intercostal space. Needle incident two, otherwise not fifth. Uh, so uh, needle thoracostomy is best. Uh, is first best, of course, intercostal and tube thoracostomy. Now same ICD. What is the boundary of safety here through which you pass ICD? The boundaries are pectoralis major, let's my dorsi, and nipple line. Nipple is in four space. But when you draw its oblique, so here it becomes a fifth intercostal space. So fifth intercostal space, pectoralis major, and that's some controversy whether it's a pectoral uh, lesmoid dorsi or mid axillary line. Clinically, we take mid axillary line, ATRS guideline, mid axillary line from where we make the um, uh, tube, we pass the tube. But boundary of triangle is lesmoid dorsi. So post axillary line is not a, the the options may differ. I'm not saying options are same, but uh, it's the question. It's the same question. Feature of neurogenic shock, which you get in early cervical injuries. Neurogenic shock, what happens? Sympathetic tone is gone, parasympathetic overtakes. So there is hypotension and bradycardia. Hypotension is a feature of shock, but bradycardia is not. You will get tachycardia, but here due to sympathetic loss, you get bradycardia. So hypotension is, uh, this is a very common question. Neurogenic shock, hypotension, and bradycardia. Normal shock, hypovolemic shock, other shock, hypotension, and tachycardia. And what about raised intracranial tension, head injury? In that we get hypertension and tachycardia, which we'll discuss later on. Munro Kari doctrine, there's a question. So hypertension and tachycardia. Sorry, hypertension and bradycardia, my fault. I'm getting little. So hypertension, that's a Cushing reflex. So I'll explain this to you later on. So decreased heart rate and increased blood pressure. The reason for decreased heart rate is to increase end diastolic volume, so increase the stroke volume and improve the perfusion, cerebral perfusion pressure. So raised intracranial tension, hypo, uh, hypertension and bradycardia, bradycardia, decreased heart rate. So in raised intracranial tension, hypertension and bradycardia. In normal shock, hypovolemic shock, other shock, hypotension and tachycardia, while in neurogenic shock, hypotension and bradycardia. Sequence of arrangement in any trauma, you know, primary survey, ABC, airway, breathing, circulation. First, intubation is not always done unless patient is not able to breathe. But what about cervical stabilization, spine stabilization? This is not a primary survey. This comes under the resuscitation process. This takes over priority over airway if there is number one cervical neck tenderness or number two, you have to intubate. If I have to take care of airway without intubation, I have to do cricothyroidotomy, I have to do um, tracheostomy, I have to do back, back mass ventilation, I don't have to move the neck, then airway will be the first priority. But if I have to extend and hyperextend the spine and put intubation, then uh, cervical spine stabilization becomes first. So airway within circulation, but here specifically they mentioned this. I'm not sure of these four options actually. So it's difficult to answer because the option may differ, but I'm just explaining. If I say what is first always, it should be airway management and intubation, first of all. But if in question there's any, you know, neck tenderness, neck pain, any like history like this, then cervical spine stabilization should get the first priority. Not used in diagnosis of breast cancer. Well, this is a very simple question on triple assessment. In triple assessment, we have clinical radiological and pathological. Triple, triple assessment has accuracy of 99.99% and clinical means clinical examination by physician. Radiological includes usually mammography, usually it and along with ultrasound. It may differ depending on the case. Some cases you have to order MRI, but mammography and pathological generally we order FNSC, but as I told you earlier, true card biopsy may be needed. So, uh, true cut biopsy may be needed. PET CT is basically for metastasis, not for the diagnosis. All are contraindication. Now, again, the options will differ. I mean, I could not get the absolute same options what was asked in the exam. But tumor 4 centimeter size is not a contraindication. 
कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन आप सिल्यूट आ नंबर वन मल्टी सेंट्रिक मल्टी फोकल मल्टीपल इज नॉट ए कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड मल्टीपल इज नॉट ए कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन मल्टी फोकल मल्टी सेंट्रिक टू टर्म्स मल्टी सेंट्रिक इज इन सेम मल्टी फोकल इज इन सेम क्वाड्रेंट स्टिल आई कैन डू बट मल्टी सेंट्रिक नो वी कैन नॉट डू सो मल्टी फोकल इज नॉट ए कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन सो आप सिल्यूट कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन आर मल्टी सेंट्रिक डिफ्यूज कार्सोवाइन सी टू एन टू नोड होमोजाइगस म्यूटेशन ऑफ एटीएम होमोजाइगस म्यूटेशन ऑफ एटीएम जीन वाइल प्रायर इराडिएशन एन वन इज नॉट अ कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन अगेन प्रायर इराडिएशन प्रेगनेंसी वाई प्रेगनेंसी दीज आर रिलेटिव वाई रिलेटिव कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन इन फर्स्ट ट्राइमिस्टर वी कैन नॉट डू वी कैन नॉट गिव रेडियो थेरापी आफ्टर सर्जरी बट थर्ड ट्राइमिस्टर वी कैन डू डू द सर्जरी एंड ऑपरेट आफ्टर आफ्टर डिलीवरी सॉरी गिव रेडियो थेरापी आफ्टर डिलीवरी सो डेफिनेटली प्रेगनेंसी बिकम्स रिलेटिव कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन फैमिली हिस्ट्री पॉजिटिव P53 और BRCA आर जीन म्यूटेशन इन फैमिली इन पेशेंट बी आर सी ए जीन म्यूटेशन विल नॉट डू बेस्ट कंज्यूमर इन फैमिली साइज मोर देन फाइव सेंटीमीटर कोलाजिन वैस्टर डिजी लाइक्स थेरोडर्मा वेयर द हीलिंग विल बी वेरी पुअर प्लस रेडियो थे विल कॉज लॉट्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम and you have to take inflammatory breast cancer also is absolute contraindication inflammatory breast cancer inflammatory breast cancer and you have to take 1 cm margin that's the question if i cannot achieve 1 cm margin we cannot do breast conservation a uh, centrally located tumor like tumor below nipple areola complex is not considered a contraindication anymore you can excise and do nipple reconstruction centrally located is not a contraindication the tumor breast ratio is important a large pendulous breast is relatively contraindication due to poor prognosis but as such large breast multiple tumor tumor less than 4 are not contraindication prior radiation is a def- uh, is all a kind of relative contraindication except b this is not a contraindication 5 cm or more is a contraindication okay so just to repeat the um, absolute contraindication and to note multicentric um homozygous uh, atm mutation diffuse carcinoma c2 inflammatory breast cancer these are absolute contraindication relatives are like size more than 5 cm n2 node is also absolute contraindication size more than 5 cm prior irradiation collagen vascular disease family history positive uh, brca and pfc mutation in family members Uh, lobular cancer which is more often bilateral and you know multi centric etc there was a question on birats so i do not know the question exactly uh, but what is birats i think we should know 0 1 2 3 4 5 zero means inconclusive you do not know it needs review one means normal two is benign and both advice is say regular follow up yearly two yearly whatever protocol is being followed same protocol you follow three probably benign the risk of cancer 2% advise six monthly review rather than yearly you go for six monthly and the cancer risk is 2% four uh this is suggestive of cancer it could be cancer but not really suggestive so here the risk ranges from 2 to 95% it has three group a b and c 2 to 10% 10 to 50% more than 50 to 95% 10 to for 2 to 10 and there here biopsy is mandatory 5 and 6 you have to go for surgery not biopsy plan surgery 5 the risk is more than 95% and 6 is 100% which is a biopsy proven cancer so 5 is highly suggestive of cancer so by rats i uh, question i do not know but basically we all know the by rats and it is very frequently asked
uh, Monroe Kelly doctrine, there's a question. Again, I do not have the exact question and options, but Monroe Kelly doctrine basically is it simply tell us that the volume inside the cranium is fixed, which is brain, CSF and um, blood. Brain is 80% and remaining 20%. CSF blood, you can say 10-10 uh, or say about 15-10. So brain, uh, brain is about same 14-1500 ml and CSF is 150, blood is also 150 ml. So the if you increase the volume of anything like brain edema, blood has to go down. So that's the problem here that brain more, the blood uh, volume will go down and that will cause ischemia. So basically cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure. And cerebral perfusion pressure is very important. You, you should keep it down 90. So to make it high, you have to have mean arterial pressure and ICT low. Mean arterial pressure is increased by nature. That's Cushing reflex. Nature, what it does, it causes hypertension and increased blood pressure and bradycardia. And how bradycardia will help? As I said, uh, end diastolic volume more, stroke volume more. So this is done by nature. Why this is done by us, by mannitol, by spironectone, I mean um, lacilectone, by diuretics, or by craniotomy or ventriculostomy. So you have to keep this low so that you keep it high. That's a simple Monroe Kelly doctrine. So keeping the ICT low and mean arterial pressure high, to, and that's why we do hyperventilation. How hyperventilation works? It washes out CO2 which causes respiratory alkalosis, which causes cerebral vasoconstriction, and which causes decrease in ICT. Don't keep the CO2 too low, otherwise patient may develop ischemia. So very rapid response you can get by respiratory alkalosis and hyperventilation, but normally that is not we follow, we use mannitol. So Monroe Kelly doctrine simply tells you that there is a concept of skull is rigid, cannot expand. So inside the skull, the volume is fixed and which is blood, brain and CSF. So if we increase volume of one, other has to go down because the volume is constant. So brain edema will suppress the blood flow and cause ischemia. So to increase the cerebral perfusion pressure, you have to decrease the intracranial pressure or increase the uh, mean arterial pressure. One question was on Foley's. Again, I do not know the exact question. I do not have the options. Probably there was a question. Two images I have taken, this is called silicone, which is white in color. This is latex, which is yellow in color. Sil silicone is less irritative, more inert. So it can be left for six weeks. And this can only be left for three weeks. Now we have hydrogel coated, this is latex. Now we have hydrogel coated latex, which is a little less irritant to the mucosa of urethra. And we also have antibiotic coated uh, catheters. So Foley's catheter, one can very well identify. As far as French is concerned, French is the outer diameter or outer circumference of the tube. Outer circumference of the tube. Not the inner circumference, not the diameter, outer circumference. To know the outer diameter, simply divide by 3 and you get diameter in millimeter. If I'm using... 12 French, then I'm using the diameter of that tube will be uh, 4, 4 millimeter. So French is outer circumference, which is a question, which is frequently asked. And the color coding, please remember these three color codes. This is what we use in adult, green, orange and red, 14, 16, 18. Like this is orange, this is yellow, 20. We don't go for very big size because that will cause more, more friction to the urethra and more injuries and more strictures. Red we do use after prostatectomy to give, you know, better pressure. The balloon we inflate the volumes of 4 ml and 30 ml. Generally we inflate 10 ml, 4, 5, sorry, 5 ml and 30 ml. A 5 ml balloon can be inflated, generally 10 ml we inflate and leave. 30 ml balloon we inflate when you have to give traction 
or after prostatectomy you have to uh, compress the prostatic fossa to stop the bleeding then you inflate the balloon 30 ml and give traction and um, these are this is a triway which is used for irrigation this is for balloon this is for a uh, foley's caster uh, euro bag like urine and this is for irrigation for post prostatectomy there is a risk of bleeding of post ur beta there is a hematuria you want irrigation of bladder you don't want clot to get uh, accumulated in the bladder and cause retention so you can use triway and with this you can use irrigation the blood uh, fluid goes in saline and washes or just anything and washes this uh, blood and comes out so the color coding is important and um, rest of the question i told you these are the points of follies there's one question on lung cancer and the question was very straightforward allopathology and surgery mixed p40 and keratin pearl positive we all know keratin pearl is for squamous cell cancer so answer was squamous cell and p40 also is very specific so I think that's it. These were the questions, surgery questions. These are, this is what I could gather. And um, there, were, there could be some more, but uh, if you have more question, you can ask on Dan's Facebook. Uh, we'll be happy to answer the question. So that's it for today. And all the best to all of you. You have need coming in next three months. So prepare for need, which is much more important. All the best. Remain focused, remain concentrated. Huh? Don't go haywire, don't read too much of erratic things. Remain focused. All the best to all of you. Thank you.